Each world inside of Super Mario 64 feels like it's able to convey more than its technology can really support. Like the developers had ideas that were too big for the N64 or DS, but they still found ways to make them happen. For example, Shifting Sandlands makes good use of its skybox to capture the feeling of being stranded in a vast desert. Doesn't look that good. This little PNG is able to do so much to make the level feel like more than an island floating in the sky. Unfortunately, it still doesn't make this level fun. But a level that I actually do enjoy playing through is Big Boo's Haunt. I thought about waiting until Halloween to talk about this level, but I don't really want to post filler delay videos for the next seven months just because Big Boo's Haunt has ghosts in it. We can all agree that this is the most spookiest level in the game. Everything from the dark color palette to the man-eating instruments paint this place as quite an eerie area, and every moment spent here is permeated by what sounds like gangster's paradise if it were sung by demons. But let's just back up here and think about how creative this whole level is. So you're walking around the castle when BOO! There's a ghost. Scary stuff. Then you follow him out to the courtyard where there's a whole bunch of ghosts. If you can take out the big one, he drops a birdcage with a little mansion in it. Then you jump in and turn tiny and now the birdcage is actually in a dark forest. I can't say that I really understand any of this or how Nintendo came up with such a bizarre idea, but it's definitely unique. One of my favorite things about this level has always been that ominous skybox. There's something so tempting about the purple sky and the dark silhouetted trees. It makes you want to break free from this cage and wander around in those strange woods. But as much as I've tried, I've never been able to jump over or squeeze between the bars. Once again, a simple PNG has done an incredible job amping up the atmosphere. Actually, let's take a look at that PNG. Yeah, this is a really cool texture. It's crazy how thin this texture is with how little uh, amount of trees and clouds that they're showing here. Some kind of kind of cool clouds, I guess. Nothing crazy. That's why I had to make it crazy for my Halloween video. You can see these like hands reaching up over here and stuff. There's an eye right there in the clouds. And then you have, uh, have a little house and a little, <laughs> little face guy down there in the bottom right. This little spot here is interesting. I don't know what that's all about. It almost looks like a figure standing there. It doesn't really look like part of a tree. This is the original uh, N64 texture, which also has that figure there. It's cool the way it's like kind of bright purple down there and then dark at the top. It, it's like a sunset. As I gaze into this forest, I'm always left wondering, where is this? At first, it seems like this is probably just an illusionary sky of this dark realm and it isn't really worth looking into. But what if it's not that simple? What else could this forest be? Well, if you think about it, this cage is just sitting on the ground in the courtyard, so maybe this is the courtyard. Maybe this is how booze view the world. Or even more unsettling, what if this is what the castle actually looks like? But that doesn't really explain why the top of the cage is missing when you enter the level. Maybe this birdcage is simply a portal that you use to warp to the actual location. But where is the actual location? Well, it's some spooky forest with booze in it. Wait, then could that make this the Evershade Valley from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon? It makes sense if you think about it, that's sort of like the Boo capital of the Mushroom Kingdom. Or it could just be a cool dark sky realm thing. No way, that's way too boring. It has to be something cool that I can connect to another irrational theory. All right, we spent long enough staring at a PNG. Let's check out the actual mansion. This is one of the funnest levels to explore. Searching a haunted mansion room by room is just something that never gets old. Well, until you're eaten by a piano. That kind of ruins the fun. As you begin to explore the mansion, you step into a silent room with a piano resting ominously next to a window, moonlight spilling onto its still keys. Floorboards creak as you creep your way up to this peculiar object. And right as you start to play Megalovania, the piano opens up and tries to devour you. I feel like Miyamoto was at home sick when they designed this level, so they got Miyazaki instead. Yeah! And I mean, geez dude, this is the first room, what the heck? After that, you're gonna be creeped out the rest of the time you're searching this house. And of course, the piano having teeth wasn't enough. You had to turn the literature evil too. Luckily, the rest of the rooms aren't nearly as sinister as the first. Well, except for the coffin room. Do you think there are actual skeletons in there? 
Maybe they're just decorational. Uh, yeah, and uh, why is there a coffin room? I'm not sure I've ever heard of a mansion that comes with a free morgue attached. But I guess if someone's gonna do it, it's gonna be King Boo. Well, that's the strange thing, actually. In the DS version, you unlock Luigi by jumping through this painting and confronting King Boo. Then you get the key and unlock the Luigi door. Well, that's what I thought. It turns out this isn't King Boo, it's just another Big Boo, but for some reason he has a crown. It's weird because he even does the King Boo laugh, which you have to use to like echolocate him. I wonder if they meant for this to be King Boo, but decided against doing a full-blown cameo crossover since Luigi's Mansion was still somewhat new when this game came out. But I'm sure I'm not the only one who was under the impression that this was King Boo. It probably doesn't help that I didn't read a darn word of dialogue when I first played this in fourth grade. Well, whether or not this guy is King Boo doesn't really matter. He's certainly been put up to this by the actual King Boo. One thing that I find strange about this whole situation is the way that the boss appears. When you stare into the mirror, Mario warps into an apparition of Luigi. This really makes it seem like Luigi himself is trapped in this painting, not just a key to a door in the castle. And let's say it is just a key, how is Luigi surviving in there? Is he being given food and water or something? These doors and their respective keys have always been very confusing to me. It's almost like Luigi's soul is tied to the key, and he's released when you unlock the door in the castle. Well, if that is the case, and Luigi himself was trapped here by King Boo, and this forest really is the Evershade Valley, that would make this a prequel to Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. It would also make this the only time that King Boo successfully traps Luigi in a painting, and now it's up to Mario to get him out. It's also cool to see how many layers of security Luigi was kept under. Not only was he trapped in a painting, but he was also trapped in a key, and the whole mansion was turned into a prison world. Well, yep, this is 100% what happened, and you can't disagree, because I'm in a video, and you're just a measly comment. I make the theories, not you guys. I'm in charge. Seriously though, if you have your own Big Boo's Haunt theories, I'd really love to read them. Big Boo's Haunt turned out to be super fun to talk about. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Thanks.